Tuskegee, Alabama. 300 miles from anywhere. More dust than the whole state of Kansas and hot enough every day to melt a man's soul. 70 years ago, Tuskegee was a launching pad for the dreams of some very special young men. Men who served their country with honor and represented their families with pride. Men who helped write history and wrote it large. They were all just kids back then, 19, 20, 21 years old, full of fight and ready to do whatever it took to find their way into the sky. Their country needed them, and they would not be denied, despite the fact that they were unwelcome, unappreciated, and very much underestimated. Charles McGee was one of those kids, and he, along with hundreds of other amazing young men, graduated from Tuskegee with coveted Army Air Corps wings. But just as important, they came away from those godforsaken Alabama fields with the unwavering belief that their newfound abilities might just help overcome prejudice, hearsay, and plain old dislike. Because it was their skills, rather than the color of their skin, that attested for these men. And oh, what skills they had. P-39, P-40, P-47, B-25, and of course the coveted P-51. The best combat airplanes America could offer in the 1940s and in the hands of the Tuskegee Airmen, their legendary status grew greater by the day. Charles McGee flew them all, of course, but it was the Mustang that was without Pierre. With it, the Airmen from Tuskegee patrolled the skies over Europe, clearing pathways for our bum groups and protecting them as they went about the business of helping win the war. They were called the Red Tails because that's how they painted their planes and they carried out their duties with a vengeance, flying more than 15,000 combat sorties, downing more than 100 enemy planes and earning some 150 distinguished flying crosses. Not bad for men who from the very outset had been told black men can't fly. Turns out that in the thin air at 30,000 feet, tucked behind a screaming Merlin engine and with tracers flying, it's the courage of your heart rather than the color of your skin that makes all the difference. History writ large indeed. We were certainly happy to get the P-51 because it gave us an altitude capability above 28,000 feet. It gave us a range of close to 1,000 miles from base and uh, had a speed well above the, the normal cruising speed of the P-47, which we had been flying. Really something to realize it's been 70 years since I stepped into the aircraft and, and uh, completed a tour and came back to the States and uh, this is just a thrill to uh, be around the aircraft and uh, the chance that uh, you can still fly and do the type of job we did many years ago, it's touching. To be able to check the aircraft over and put your hands on it, kick the tires and all, wow, it brings back many memories of those days uh, when we first got into the P-51C. It reminds me of occasionally these folks saying uh, that uh, the plane went by and I knew it was a black pilot. My feeling is, hey, they can see red, but not black. Every one of the Tuskegee Airmen will tell you history is of no value if we can't learn from it. It is the deeds of the Tuskegee Airmen that have helped us learn from the past and through it forge a brighter future. They've taught us determination against adversity, courage in the face of hatred, and belief in one's self, despite being given the slimmest of odds for success. As their motto goes, remember the Tuskegee Airmen. Whatever your dream is, no matter how big, work to make it real. And in so doing, 
you will succeed. Now, it is time to pass the baton. To impart these values to the next generation of young people with stars in their eyes and determination in their hearts. It is perhaps their most important mission in more than 70 years, and it is one that they will see through to completion, just as they did with every mission so many years ago.